Mark, I don't want to focus on bad things, but you did suffer your, your first loss over the summer. Yeah. I just wonder kind of, you know, what that was like for you. You're not a guy that's, that's dealt with losing very <laughs> often, man. So, you know, what was the process like of kind of getting over that and, and getting past it? Yeah, like I said, I've, I've never lost a fight before, and that was my first loss. Uh, at first walking out, you know, it took me a week maybe, you know, to get around it. But, you know, I had, uh, I had Brad Pickett, a couple of guys that, you know, say you're going to hate this, you're going to feel like the old hates you and everything. You know, just, I just listened to that, you know, took it in. And uh, I was, I, you know, I just stayed at home for a bit. I had food, good food, you know, just sat much, relaxed with my family for a little, for a little while. And uh, nah, yeah, that was it, you know. I just thought, you know, it was a bit of an experience. I could have done a bit better, but it is what it is. And uh, you know, it's about learning. Good job, I haven't lost in the, outside the UFC. It's the big stage, and you know, you make mistakes. Any mistake, you know, you, you do count. So, it's what it is. It's about moving forward. I was gonna say. I mean, we do hear fighters say, "Hey, that's when you learn the most lessons." You know, mm -hmm. that's when you really move forward. I mean, so what did you take out of that? Was it something that you uh, felt went wrong, or that you did wrong? Yeah, I still wouldn't accept a loss because I don't accept that. You know what I mean? You know, but it is what it is. What well, I think I did because uh, it was a bit. I just realized it was a bit inexperience of me because. Uh, it cost me because I usually have never been kicked in a calf before, and uh, usually it's a fight kick, and you can take that couple of shot. You can take it a couple of times, and a calf kick. It was, I think I did it three times. First one, I, I didn't hurt. Second, but with the same spot three times, and uh, that stopped my leg movements a little bit, so it stopped most of my movements. And uh, even saying that, I watched the fight back. I fought one first round, and the third round. So it was, it was a close fight, but you know, I told him like after the fight, you know, you got lucky. But it is what it is, and uh, I've learned from it, you know, it's about being active, you can lose at any time, so make sure you move around, you know, always, you know, re remain in a fight, and, uh, and that not to happen again, because <laughs> best people say, oh, you can't take leg kicks. No, I go kick the same spot three times for my own fault, thinking, oh, I can take this, you know what I mean, and it cost me, so it is what it is. Very nice. We still get a big fight here. You get matched up with Dan Hooker, who's coming off a really nice win in his last performance. Uh, so this is a fight that, that you wanted to have, right? I mean, why, why is this a matchup that, that appealed to you? Yeah, I don't like people talking on Twitter saying, oh, no one wants to fight them, I want to dance. Because I, so I just tweeted him straight away, listen, I called Sean Shel Shelvin for I said, listen, I want to fight, and uh, this guy wants to fight. Let's make it happen. And uh, it's happening. But I didn't like because he was going, oh, sign the contract. I said, listen, I've wanted you, so don't talk shit. You know what I mean? So now I've got it, and... Uh, yeah, so I'm happy to have it and ready to go. Very nice. And we just found out, elevated to the main card now. I yeah, mean, this yeah, was yeah. a fight that people wanted to see. Yeah. Does that add to it a little bit? I mean, year in pay-per-view, Las Vegas, I mean, now being on the main card, does that make it more special for you? To me, personally, it's about winning. I always mean winning means more than anything. You know, they can put you on the main, uh, main card, pay-per-view, whatever. You're losing, it's not good. So to me, my focus on winning. And, uh, but it's a, it's a, a bonus. Very nice. Yeah. Now you mentioned uh, you've been getting some inside information on him on, on the way. You might not believe it. I've probably got a message. I don't want to grass the guy up. <laughs> but I have got, I have, I, I want to listen to that, you know. It's just, you know, to, just to let him know. But I'm not that type of person who listen to the guy that's telling me because fights can always change, you know. Once you're in there, it's between me and you. It's, it's nothing to do with the coach thinking, you, oh, he does this wrong, does that wrong. It's between me and the guy we're fighting. So I didn't really listen to much of it. Very nice. Well, when you look at his game, I mean, we know what you think about him is online and his Twitter yeah. and that sort of thing. But what about his game? I mean, is there anything he does that impresses you? That you're his game, about? as far as I know, he wins fights that he should win. When it comes to people like me, he loses. Because I just think he's, he's an average fighter. You know, his style, he comes forward, but he hasn't got much movement because he just comes forward. And uh, to me, I find it pretty easy to fight a Thai guy. So it makes sense. He said he thinks a lot of your flashiness is kind of smoke and mirrors, that it looks pretty, it makes the fans go <laughs> yeah. crazy, but it's not really effective. How do you, how do you It's only effective, but we'll find out. <laughs> There's one way to find out. And uh, I just, I'm just excited to go in and you know, show it, because people think I'm flashy or whatever, but that's the way I fight. And I can't fight normal, and I feel it's boring because the crowd are not screaming. So that's the way I fight, and we'll see. Very nice. Training at American Top Team, I'd read at one point you were considering moving full time to Florida. Is that still something I, you're I have? About? Yeah. Since my last fight, basically, I, I went back. I was helping Dustin for his last fight, and uh, in Santiago, I was there helping his fight for that. So I, I've been ready. So I, since since that fight, I basically been living in Florida full time. I got my car there. I've got my little room. I've got my TV. So it's all set. I'm just live there for a while until I can afford to move out and uh, get my own place. Very nice. So do you feel like 
you know, maybe this we're going to see a higher level than you've been at because you've had all that time at such a great camp? I mean, I've been spoiling a lot of high level guys, so I, I, I'm confident in my own game and uh, I know what I can bring to the table. So it's about getting in there uh, on a Saturday night and then showing it. Very nice. I know this is a big fight. You don't want to look too far past it, but I got to wonder, you know, Nick Lentz is a guy that's been out there calling that he wants to beat ah, everybody in American that. top team. You, you want to jump in on that Man. challenge? Listen, I, I think he, 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 will, he will get in light up, you know. I mean, Will will beat him. He's talking shit because guys like that, I would take it. But if that Dan, Dan Lambert is serious about the bet, and then I'm willing to take the fight because I don't think it's, it's irrelevant to me. It's not good. So if Dan Lambert is serious, you want to make it happen, then put 50, 50 grand there, then I'll I, be down for it. But, you know, I'm interested in other stuff. I've got a, a, a point to prove. So after this fight, I'm, I'll go over plans. What, uh, what do you think about that London card in March? I mean, would that be tempting for you or is that too quick? London needs me at the moment, so I'm going to be on that card, you know. They need me at the moment because, you know, not being uh, rude or anything, no disrespect. Uh, I just feel like, you know, we had three guys, UK guys, to fight in that. Uh, but fight, I think it was Winnipeg or something. Mm -hmm. uh, if they would have won, it would have been great for them to be on that card. But I think most of them will take the, take the break. So I feel like UFC, they know what we're doing and uh, they're on me. So they're going to make it happen. Very nice. Well, you had a lot of hype behind you, man. There was a lot of people high, and then one little setback, you know, sometimes it, it changes things. But where do yeah. you feel like you're at? I mean, do you feel like you still deserve that attention? Do you feel like you're, you're ready to be a contender? Well, it's peop people decide. But, but obviously, I've got a hype for a reason, so it's not, it's not like I didn't earn it. I had to do things to earn that hype. So, yeah, I'm still, I believe I'm one of the guys, you know, who are going to make it right to the top. Well, this fight was kind of flying under the radar. Now yeah. it's on the main card. It is. How do yeah. you see this thing playing out? I mean, when you when you envision this one going and knowing what you know about Dan Hooker, I mean, a lot of people thought this was kind of a, a fight of the night type fight maybe, but uh, do you feel like you go out there and dominate? How does this thing go down? I want to dominate. Dan Hooker should have been like a, a working office or something. He should work in an office. He's, he's not a fighter. Like I said, he wins fights that he should win. The fights that he should to build himself up, he loses. And it'll be exactly the same. He's not losing against Bone Crusher.